has been allowed to be when we are standing up. This is God. Chilling paranormal activity has brought archaeologists' work to a standstill, and they're seeking answers. Perry, something's moving in there. I don't know what it is, but something's moving. In. See? Is this mysterious stone a portal to the dead? Do you see that? What was I it? I don't know. And later, GHI witnesses a bullfight with a dead matador. Who's that? I thought I saw a shadow or something. I just saw someone. There was someone over there right now. Is the ghost of this Peruvian hero sending an ominous warning to other bullfighters? Are you still in this blue ring? Did you hear that? Ghost Hunters International investigates right now. This case is deep within the Andy mountain range, and it's a pre-Incan temple. Now, within the temple itself, there's a land zone. This particular stone opens up a type of portal. It's a doorway between the living and the dead. They were also saying that there's a lot of human sacrifice. It all had connection to do with this rock, right. this portal to the afterlife. Yeah. There are um, a lot of paranormal claims here. Now, archaeologists are currently excavating the sites, and they're starting to see a lot of things, and they're becoming concerned. So that's something we'll be dealing with once we land, and I believe we've quite a journey ahead of us. David, how you doing, guys? You made it finally. Yes. Welcome yes. to the high Andes. We better keep going. It's a long way to go. Okay. Follow me, please. What type of history can you give us for the land zone? When the archaeologists have dig, they found this particular piece in one of the tunnels, which is the most sacred piece of them. It's called the Lanzon. And it has some drawings carved on it. And they have some painting on the walls of human sacrifices. Most of the stuff happening is around the Lanzon area. This is the first time we open an investigation that close to the Lanzon. This particular investigation, I think, is going to give us many answers for the archaeologists' concern of the paranormal activity. You start to feel the height here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. As, as higher we want to get you, it's going to feel a little more pressure. The air is going to become a little thinner. Okay. Most of the archaeologists used to work at the late. However, we don't know what's going on. And just for safety issue, they leave early. You see those remains, the archaeologists who live there move the whole families because they think they have been human sacrifices. They have found jaws or different kind of skulls smashed in some way that they think they were sacrificed. Like these were quite brutal, they've smashed their skulls. savage, yes. These people living on top of a graveyard, what type of paranormal activity Well, that's the story of the guy who used to grow up in this area. I heard someone knock at the front door. When I opened it up, there was a terrifying white figure. It told me to follow it towards the river, so I did. I kept walking toward it, and all of a sudden, it vanished into thin air. So here we go, guys. The main square plaza. It truly is an amazing setting. They use this plaza for ceremonies, rituals, given offerings to the gods. There is a lot of paranormal things going on there. I was working, making my rounds, when I saw the figure of a white woman. She started waving her hand, and she was calling out to me. So I started walking toward her. Then I noticed that she was not standing in a normal way, but floating. Then suddenly, she disappeared right in front of my eyes. And here we go, the gallery of the Lanzon. And we are about to enter one hallway underground. is the famous Lanzon. Wow. Whoa. So this is it. That's cool. The 
This is definitely one of the most sacred pieces on the Chavin culture. Mm -hmm. Nobody has been allowed to be when we are standing up. Now, I'm a little confused about the significance of the land zone to that culture. This is God this for is God. them. This is the representation of their God. I don't think any from the popular masses will be able to jump up here. It was so sacred, they worship from the plaza. These people weren't able to see God, and only the highest priests were allowed to be in touch with him. What types of paranormal activity actually take place at the site? The security guards who were guarding that, they have these claims right outside. Uh, While I was working, I saw standing on the wall the form of a person. It was over nine feet tall. It was wearing a white tunic or cape that went from its shoulders all the way down to its feet. As it was walking along the wall, it suddenly disappeared. Now, all these things are happening right around this area where Dalanzon is at. There is something going on, so we have a concern. And I think with that investigation, we're going to have the answers we're looking for. David, I think we would really like to take this opportunity to set up some pieces of equipment and see if we can get some answers for you. Let's do it. The main reason that we're here is because of this land zone. The archaeologists are afraid to be working here. They're afraid of the paranormal activity that is happening, and they're pointing the finger at the land zone. So our big thing now is to come in and see, is this land zone possibly causing the paranormal activity here at Chivin? suffered quite severely um, from altitude sickness. However, I was still able to investigate by manning the DVR system. I still find it weird that they build this whole big thing around this one piece of stone. Chris and I wanted to investigate the land zone to try and understand why people were thinking this was the doorway to a lot of the paranormal activity. I'm just going to use the geomagnetic meter and see if there's any disturbances in the natural magnetic fields. We were using several different types of equipment to monitor what was going on. We were using a geo monitor, which monitors the electrical disturbances from the Earth itself. I'm just getting a very, very slight fluctuation of the geomagnetics, but there's nothing major that says it was standing out. Let's just check this, see if the stones may be carrying a charge. We checked to make sure that there was no EMF signatures coming off it, to make sure that it wasn't holding a static charge. No charge, no carrying a current. It's dead. You know, I find it funny that they think all the activity revolves around this thing when they have a bunch of sacrificed people buried out in the lawn. Yeah. So maybe the whole thing was made up, and there's nothing to it after all. Why the hell would that be going off? Why is it going off now? I don't know. We've checked the stone. It's not producing a current. If you're mad at me, if you don't like what I'm saying, stop the beeping to let us know that it's you. Just freaking out. There's something around here, maybe. Nothing. Still is one. There's nothing. The stone itself is not holding a charge. Oh, Is that you? No. I heard like a moan coming from back here. That wasn't you? No. Now this thing's going again. Look. What the hell was that? And why the hell is this thing acting? Investigating around the land zone, one of the things I brought up was that they're telling us that there's people that have been sacrificed here buried just outside of the walls of this temple, but they think a stone is haunting the property. As soon as the conversation went there, our devices started acting up and going crazy. What the hell are they setting it off? It's going off the scale the further we go up. It wasn't reading anything. No, it was dead before. Pardon the pun. 
I checked to see if it was holding a static charge. So I see that it was holding a small voltage at the top of the land zone, which wasn't happening at the bottom. Nothing just below. stops. Something very bizarre is happening with that stone. We'll go through to analysis to see if there's anything coming from this friendly faced stone. Scott, Joe, and myself headed over to the graveyard to investigate these claims of this shadow person that lures people over to the river nearby. We wanted to see if the land zone could possibly be instigating paranormal activity in any of the surrounding areas. So it seems that they see shadows torso up. Mm -hmm. And somebody used to live in that house, and uh, they were spooked and they had to move out. But it's also built on top of a burial ground. You're right, Joe? Yeah. Careful, it's real steep. How does it look up there? It's, uh, it's really overgrown in here. EVP session, Joe, Scott, and Susan at the graveyard in Chavin. Is there anyone here with us tonight? Point three, point two. What is that running over there? By the trees? It just looked white and it looked like it was in the woods. Hello? Who's there? I saw that pretty clearly, actually. Do you see that? So something is behind that wall. I saw it, dude. Did you? What was I it? I don't know. I saw what looked like a whitish gray. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When we were investigating the graveyard, we were doing an EVP session. Almost instantaneously, this white mist appeared. It was a mass. I don't know what it was. Uh, Susan saw it shortly after. Uh, we gave chase, and we were not able to further substantiate what we were seeing at that time. However, we did have a lot of equipment running, so hopefully we caught that. It ran over this way and then looked down right behind this wall. This is the house of the guy who saw the half shadow? Yeah, his family lived here. Barry and I headed down to the cemetery, and that's where the old ruins are to the house that used to be there. This is where Joe, Susie, and Scott were when they saw this white form or white mist that they chased down. So we headed down here to try to see if we could experience the same thing or maybe even try to debunk it. someone here with us, can they step out? There's something moving in here. Don't be afraid of us. Someone there? Can you make a sound and let us know where you are? I'm not here to harm you. Whoa. There is something moving in here. Who is this half shadow who leads people away? <gasps> Barry, something's moving in there. I don't know what it is, but something is moving in there. See? Whoa. There 
there's something moving in here. Who is this half shadow who leads people away? Barry, something's moving in there. I don't know what it is, but something is moving in there. You can even hear it. See? I'm telling you, there is something moving in there. All right. If there are people buried under these ruins, can you please step forward to us? We're not here to cause you any harm. We're trying to find out who the shadow is. Oh, they hear it. They hear it. Where the hell is it? We were hearing some unusual noises. We couldn't see what was making those noises, so we just had to chalk that up as something unusual. See down there? Are you able to focus your camera down there? See where those four trees are? No. It looks like something stood out. It's too far on getting us the grass as close to us. There it is again. What? You see it? Oh. oh. I think it was that bush there in the, in the moonlight. This here. That's what was causing the problem. Okay. Joe, Scott, and Susan were here earlier on this evening investigating, and they had reported seeing this unusual white figure. I thought I had seen something white in among the trees, but whenever we investigated further, it turned out that it was just simply one of the, the bushes reflecting the moonlight. Wow, look at this thing. Oh, this place is great. Currently, we're investigating the land zone, which is a sacred stone believed to be a portal between the living and the dead. We want to follow up on Chris and Barry's experience where the geo monitor started to go off and they heard what sounded like a moan. Is anyone in here with us? What's down there? Kind of weird. What does it look like in there? How far does it, it go back? It goes really far back. Wow. We noticed that there was a tunnel. It looked recently excavated. The construction has been recently done. That usually heightens paranormal activities. Were you a sacrifice? Or were you the ones doing the sacrifice? Did anybody just whisper just now? I heard what sounded like a whisper. Hello? Are you trying to communicate? Did I hear you whisper something? Did you hear that? No. Can you do that again? The device just started kicking off. Come on, say something to us. I keep thinking I'm hearing stuff. Are there remains in here? Remains of people you sacrificed? Do you hear footsteps? Where? I thought I hear foot I thought I could hear footsteps. I'm not sure where it's coming from. It just gave me goosebumps. We've reset them for you now. Now we're asking you to come forward and change those colors. How about blue now? I did hear what sounded like footsteps. Scott thought he heard a moan. So hopefully with the equipment that we had running, we were able to catch some of that. Okay, folks, we've had a great investigation. We have a lot to get through an analysis. So, whoever's left standing, let's get all the equipment wrapped up and get out of here. They had a lot of paranormal claims that seem to revolve around this land zone that they believe is some sort of portal to the afterlife. People are afraid of whatever is going on in this location. During the investigation, Chris and I heard a voice inside the area where the landstone is located. Joe, Scott, and Susan are also seeing this unusual white mist figure that was appearing toward the graveyard. It's going to be interesting to see what really has come out of this.
footage I want you guys to take a look at now. Both Scott and Susan, you were seeing this white mist right by the house that's over the graveyard. It's like white figures. Take a look at this. We're looking at this area here. Now, this is the house. See how this is just... Yeah, 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 yeah. How is that? I'm just wanting to know if this is sort of what you guys were seeing. Is there a wall there? There's a little wall, and then it drops down and goes near the, the river. Did you go over that? Was it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we, we all right. finally went down okay. there. And well, if we're behind the wall, then mm -hmm. I'm going to say that that's probably our flashlights. I mean, I would be in agreement to say that that was most likely an IR light or a flashlight coming from your investigation. Yeah. It could be, yeah. Okay, guys, after Barry and Chris experienced all this stuff at the land zone chamber, they went ahead and set up a piezo mic to see if they could right. pick up any frequencies or any further sounds. Um, they picked stuff up. You guys gotta check it out. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. wow. Now, that shouldn't have happened. That sounds like a heartbeat. That is creepy. Hey, Davies. Good to see you again. The ruins here at Chavin um, have been truly remarkable. This big mystery with the, the land zone, you know, is that producing the paranormal phenomenon that's being reported from this site? We wonder. We wonder. Well, Chris and I were investigating down um, at the old abandoned house on top of the graveyard, and that's where Chris happened to see this black figure move. I had seen what looked like a four-foot-tall mm. shadow or something move left to right. Now, when we turned our flashlights on, whatever this thing was should have been trapped in that corner. We would have seen something if something was in there. Susan, Joe, and Scott were also working in the same area, um, and both Susan and Scott had witnessed this white figure. Whatever this was backed off and was gone. We had cameras pointed in that direction, but it wasn't able to capture any of the activity that they were seeing. Obviously, the big story here was the land zone. We're trying to get answers for you, whether or not all the activity that people have experienced here is actually attached to it or not. So, what you're going to see, this is Barry and I investigating down by the land zone. We'll get your take on it. I want to see that. <laughs> so maybe the whole thing was made up, and there's nothing to it after all. This is inside. Why the hell would that be going off? Why is it going off now? I don't know. The generator reaction. Yeah. Well, what we also seen was that this reaction increased the further it went up the stone. What we're seeing so goes against everything that we would say couldn't happen. And it got stranger. We took the decision of attaching a specialized microphone to the land zone itself to see if we could detect anything that may be coming through the stone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the vibrations that were coming through the stone that we couldn't hear, we want to let you hear for oh, yourself. Please. What is that? This comes from the land zone? These vibrations are coming from the stone. Um, there was a, a multitude of things that were happening in there that we just simply can't explain. This is just amazing. Yeah. We leave on the note that we do see something very weird going on with the land zone. We have no idea what the hell it is. Even though we probably don't know exactly what it is, now I understand many things that happen in this area. Yeah. yeah. Definitely something's going on here. Mm -hmm. Overall, all of us felt that there's no reason why anybody should feel in danger here. Um, it's definitely not something I think people need to be fearful of. That's great to know. Thank you, David. It was a great opportunity for Thank us. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chris. After we have all these results from GHI, the archaeologists will be able to keep doing their work with less concern of the paranormal activity as they used to have before. The land zone is still a mystery, I think. Yeah, something's going on with that rock. I honestly didn't expect half of what we had happen around it. Yeah. Well, let's pick up the rest of the team and start heading back down into uh, sea level. Back to the hotel, James. Don't spare the horses. <laughs>
corridors of the bullfighting ring. People have also reported seeing other shadow figures as well as hearing strange sounds. So our client has called us in because there's this huge bullfight festival coming up, and it seems like the activity has been stirring up a lot since we're getting closer to the date of this festival. And his concern is whether or not Juan Suarez himself is actually there. Folks, it looks like the bell rings just up in front of us. Guys, Come on. Hey. I'm so glad you made it. Hey. I call GHI because for several years people is always nervous and freaky about the stories of the ghosts that we have here in Plaza de Acho. It might be Juan Suarez. The whole bullfighting thing, is that something that the Peruvians really enjoy and they get into? Yeah, because it's passion, also it comes with the money, you know, and fame. Yeah, okay. A bullfighter is, you know, a big shot. You know. <laughs> it's a rock star. getting into a ring with a bull would be dangerous obviously i mean how many deaths have come out of it the only one who died here was juan suarez he was a slave the spanish took them to the plaza de Acho to work in the back with the bulls mm -hmm. he was still growing up and little by little he started to bullfight and he become a great bullfighter juan suarez become a star how exactly did he die in this ring there was one day that this bull, Candela, crushed his head. These people pull out the bull mm -hmm. out of the ring. Juan Suarez was still alive, but in the infirmary, he was dead already. We're led to believe that there's a lot of paranormal activity going on. I'll tell you the experience I had when I was a child. Great. I went to the restroom. When I went inside, there was this tall black shadow he looked at me and he went away. I get freaked out. I run away out. That's why I think Juan Suarez stayed around here. It seems there's quite a bit of activity, especially around booth number nine. Oh, yeah, that's the entrance number nine over there. This is Lloyd. I was performing my rounds just to check that everything was fine. I decided to go to number nine, and to my surprise, I thought someone was following me. So I turned around, and as soon as I turned, I saw the shadow disappear in front of me. What else is happening? The Guardian says in the nighttime they usually see shadow of a guy walking around him. In the ring? In the ring. Okay. They hear hoops. My friend was in the middle of the ring, and he heard the breathing and hoops of a bull. He started to run away, and when he finally stopped to turn around and look, nothing was there. I think it'd be a good idea if we were all able to see this infirmary where Juan allegedly passed away. Yeah, and sure, of course. Idea. Let's go right now. Great. Okay. Follow me, all right? In 1914, Juan Suarez died here. I am just curious, is that the only reason why we're seeing this room, or is there actual claims of activity that took place here, too? There are also some shadows outside from the door. The people you should see. And again, it's the popular belief that this, this is Juan. We just finished the tour of Plaza de Acho with Juan. It was interesting to get in there, get to know the claims a bit more. A lot of shadows. It seems that everybody is tying the activity back to this bullfighter, Juan Suarez. Go back up, go back up. Uh, stop. We are covering this place pretty much from top to bottom, and a lot of it's working around the claims that we've actually received. Is Juan Suarez trying to pass on a message? Um, and tonight, GHI is hopefully going to find that out. Wow, folks, what are we looking like? I've got four cameras in the arena where these shadows have been seen. We've got two full-spectrum cameras there. Great. Now, in addition to that, what I also have is a locked-off DVR camera down by the infirmary to try and catch that shadow by the doorway. Okay, good setup. Let's get started and see what we catch. Okay, okay great. I'm just going to walk around quick. 
So Paulina headed over to investigate the arena. We were setting up some audio devices. We were thinking maybe we could conduct an EVP session and have Juan speak with us directly. Audio test. The question I think that we really want to know is Juan Suarez trying to warn the matadors. And why does he choose this time of year? Senor Suarez, do you have a message or a warning for the matadors? Someone's walking. I just saw someone. There was someone over there right now. Suze? Yeah. Keep a watch at the top level up there. Yep. <clears throat> what was that? What the hell was that? I just saw someone. There was someone over there right now. Suze? Yeah. Keep a watch at the top level up there. Yep. What was that? What the hell was that? Whilst we're asking our EVP questions, I did witness something walk past the doorway. I checked every booth that was up there. Nobody was there. I just ran the entire length of this and clear as day passed by two doorways. There is an off chance that the thermal camera may have caught this. The camera itself is facing that way, however, it may have just been a little too far away. This is one of those occasions where I'm really going to hope that it showed up. There's definitely something odd going on in this place. I mean, outside of Juan Suarez dying in here, we've got pretty much just the shadows outside the door. That's correct. Barry and I were investigating the infirmary, and this is where Mr. Suarez died. Senor Suarez, is there some sort of message that you're trying to pass along? Maybe to the other bullfighters that fight here? establish if senior Suarez was still here. We started to hear some unusual types of movement. We weren't quite sure where it was coming from. This is Tunnel 9. The story behind Juan Suarez is that in Tunnels 9 and 10 in the bathroom area, they see a dark shadow, but they only see it from the waist up. Joe and I were investigating Tunnel 9. We were trying to make contact with Mr. Suarez, who has been said to appear. These tunnels are creepy. Senor Suarez, are you here? I keep thinking that people are seeing you and that you maybe have a message for somebody and that's why you're staying, you know? Is bullfighting dangerous and you're trying to keep people from doing it? Give us any sign that you are with us and you understand what we're asking. They said they hear like hoof prints coming from the arena area. I know the Matadors took great pride in what they did. You oh, think yeah. Senor Suarez would come out and, and let us know what he experienced, you know? Who's that? What is it? I thought I saw, sh like, movement, like a, sh a, a shadow or something. What the hell was that? I saw, like this. I saw, like, a head. There's nobody around here. Nobody. The 
toilets or to go to the bathrooms? I think the bathrooms are right there. Right here. We proceeded to go to the bathroom where Suarez was seen, or his shadow was seen. Senor Suarez, my friend Joe has set up a laser grid. These red dots, if you walk through them, your image will appear to us much more clearly. Senor Suarez, are you in here? Was it you who Juan saw when he was a little boy? I feel a little off, you know. You're right, though? Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just like off balance and a little foggy. Are you trying to make contact with Joe? I feel just a little off. I cannot explain it. I'm just going to set this recorder in the middle, see if we can capture those sounds of the footsteps or the pounding of bulls as they roar toward us. Chris and I were investigating in the bull ring. We were trying to figure out if there was any sign of paranormal activity here and if that was going to be threatening to some of the bull fighting that's going to be happening here in the next several months. We've got the door that leads straight through to where the bulls are kept. Yeah. We've left it open. We're standing in the middle of the bull ring. Yeah. I'm ready. Lon Suarez. Senior Suarez, are you still in this bull ring? Is there anyone here, any spirit here, which will cause anyone harm? We are told that there's shadows seen here, shadow people. If there's anybody here, if it's Senor Suarez or any other fighter, anybody, please don't be afraid to come out and talk to us. We've opened the gates. We're letting the bulls in. Where are you? What does that sound like to you? Horses? sound like to you? Horses? It sounds like running. It sounds like it's coming from over here. We started hearing something that sounded like like horses' hooves that were clicking back and forward. It lasted for about 10 to 15 seconds. You know, I'm thinking to myself, what was it? If it was a, a flag, you know, a flagpole? Oh, and I was thinking too. of that, and I was thinking, well, why are we not hearing it now? We can't really figure out what was truly making that noise, but we do have two recorders that were running down in the stadium at that time. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we've got that for analysis. Had a great investigation. Let's get the lights on and get packed up. We just finished our investigation of Plaza de Acho. The people have asked us in here to see if there's going to be any danger for the upcoming festival within the next few months. We really do hope that uh, some of the spirits have come forward to at least give us some indication of whether anyone is in danger. I have no idea if Juan Suarez was the one that was responsible for some of the things that we were experiencing. Hopefully we'll be able to figure out who it is that could possibly be haunting the plaza. The big question was, is Juan Suarez still here in this bull ring? Is he trying to get a message across to the bullfighters with the upcoming celebration? Is there anything that people should be concerned about? 
Some of the teams were having unusual experiences during the investigation. Joe and Scott thought they had witnessed this head that stepped out from the corridor at number nine. Very creepy, yeah. We went looking over the DVR footage to see if there was anything there. Nothing showed up, so that remained a personal experience. This seemed to be something that was playing through the night because Paul and Susan were here in the main bull ring. They thought that they had witnessed someone moving along the top, along the back here. Now, Paul immediately gave chase, but there was no one there. Wow, that's scary, man. That's really good. <laughs> one of the claims of activity that you had told us about was here in this bull ring. Some guards had said to you that they were hearing what sounded like hooves. Yes. Chris and I were investigating here. We were running through the EVP questions. We were really challenging yeah. anything that may have been here. And during that process, Chris and I thought we heard something that sounded like hooves. No way. Yes. Good. And we want to let you hear those. See, it's true. It's true. What's true? What they say. To a point because we were using a second piece of equipment which was left on the ground floor of the bull ring. So we want you to have a listen to this. What? What's that? That was a train that was running on the other side of the river. What we discovered was that there were different levels of noise going on within the bull ring. What to us at this level was the sound of hooves. But in truth, at the very bottom of the bull ring, you can hear it properly. What a great equipment you got, guys. <laughs> wow, you get shy. <laughs> So we had a great investigation here at the bull ring, and we did give every opportunity for the great bullfighter Juan Suarez to come forward to us, or any other bullfighter or spirit that may have been here. But for us, they didn't make that step forward. We had some experiences we couldn't explain. Unfortunately, we weren't able to back any of those experiences up on our equipment. Really? really? Yes. So we believe that everything's going to be absolutely fine for everyone coming here. That's great. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Nice Thank you so much for having us. I'm really happy with the evidence that GHI presented. At the same time, me and the rest of the people here in Lima, Peru, still thinking that Juan Suarez, his soul must be wandering around here. Juan seems very happy knowing that his bull fights are safe and the fighters are safe as well. Yeah. And I think we're going to continue having the second recorder. Yeah. Because it really helped us this time. Did you do that on purpose? Did you have a feeling that that would happen? You know, I did. I went with intuition. I think it went pretty well and I'm looking forward.